In this mini series, we're going to demonstrate how to add in different types of content blocks into our pages in Squarespace. As this is the first chapter in the series, I'm going to take a little bit longer here and we're going to go back to not quite the very beginnings, but once we've already got a website set up in Squarespace, we can go via the menu system on the left and go into website. Once we've clicked into website, we can go to pages and then we can navigate through and find the page that we want to add our block to. Click on that and now we're in the page and ready to press edit in the top left hand corner. From here, we can hover over the gaps between each section and we can see that there's an option to add a section either above or below. As this is a heading section that I've already created, I'm gonna click on add section below. And in this section now we can choose to add in a blank section or one of the pre-existing templates available on Squarespace. To keep this really simple, I'm gonna go with a blank section and now we've got an area where we can add blocks via this button on the top left hand corner. So let's add our first block and it's going to be text. However, we can use the search to search for the option. As this content block is in the top left hand corner of the menu, we're going to go for this option. And from here, we've got a standard text block. I've got some placeholder Latin text that I'm going to use for this example on a keyboard shortcut using a text expander tool. And now I've got a couple of paragraphs to play with. If I click, hold and drag on this block, I can move it from one section to another, but within this main content frame. I'm gonna keep this section depressed at the moment so we can see the 24 column grid that spans across the website. This means that we can break our content down into multiples adding up to 24 meaning that we could go with a content block left and right, each spanning 12 columns. And that's what we're gonna do here. But it stays within this framework. The reason it stays within this framework is that this section here will go off the edge of smaller screens. This allows us to keep a really good tight margin on our layouts and some nice balance throughout. If I wanted to increase the spacing between these text blocks, I can go into the section editor, of which I'll be covering in more detail in other tutorials, and then increase either the width or the height gap between each of these text blocks. Now with that done, let's start editing some of the text on the page. We've got two options. We can either add the text all in one block, as in this example here, or we can add multiple blocks if we want more tight control over the space in between sections. So I'm going to rename this to subheading and I'm going to put it in as a heading two. Now we can align our content accordingly. The second option is to add our subheading into the same content block. And this is what I do most of the time. It's just easier to organize and manage, especially when we go across to mobile view to edit in here as well. But what it does mean, and if I bring this over to the right, so we've got the two contrasting options, we can adjust the height section between the areas to customize the gap between our heading blocks and our paragraph content blocks. Other options within the text editor are everything you'd expect to see from Microsoft Word, Google Docs, or Pages, including bold and italic, and recently the option to change color of text. I'd recommend using this sparingly and always have the overarching brand for your site in the back of your mind as you do this. We can also change for multiple heading styles within our content area. And another easy to use feature that's often overlooked is the difference between setting paragraph breaks and line breaks. So by default, if I was to press enter here, we create a brand new paragraph. This allows me to change the heading or paragraph style of this section below. But notice what happens when I press backspace to bring it back into the other paragraph. This is all a heading three now. So to separate it, I have to press enter. But say I just want this word to start on the next sentence. If I was to press enter, we've got a bigger gap here and that won't work. So if I hold shift and press enter, it will create a line break. And this can happen with anything in your designs if you want to create more compact text layouts. So that it's enter to create a paragraph break, shift and enter to create a line break. Other design features in here, everything from the option to be able to put underline effects. You 
included in this underline effect here, we can also change the color of that underline. We can select our text and make any word, sentence, or phrase into a link. So let's say we want to make these words a link to another page. Highlighting them, I can go to the chain icon and I can either type in the URL or I could choose to link to a file, email, or phone. We can change the justification or the alignment of each paragraph individually. We can also use the quote option to make a section of content on the page jump out. And of course, we've got bullet points and numbered lists. There's a strike through option and the option to indent and outdent text as well. The final two features in this text block before we wrap up, we've got the option to paste as plain text. Say, for example, if I was to copy this, add a new block and just paste it in, we can see the formatting is retained. And that's the same if we were to link from another third party website. So if we were to strip out all of that formatting, we can try it again. By just expanding this toolbar, if you don't see them all, we press the three dots to expand. And now we can use the paste from clipboard option. This is paste as plain text. And if you follow these instructions, we paste the content into this area now. Okay, Squarespace just lost connection there for a second. So I'm just picking up again. And so this is where we started from. Let's say we wanted to add a text block to the right and paste that content in once more. I'm gonna add a new text block. We'll leave it empty for now. Add that text block in. And instead of pasting by using a keyboard shortcut, Command V here on a Mac, I'm gonna to go to the clipboard icon with a T in it. I could use the paste as plain text, or alternatively, I can paste the content in, highlight it all, Command A, and then use the remove text formatting option. That keeps the heading styles, but it removes things like the underline and the text color. I can adjust the column widths once these are in place. I can move them around so that they can be offset, or I could at any point decide to switch it up and go for a three column split. By clicking and dragging each column, when it goes from blue to gold, we know then that we have consistent column spacing. I could then duplicate a text section at any time and create a simple three column split. There's so much customization using Fluid Engine in Squarespace with our text blocks. The limit really is your imagination. Before we wrap up, we're gonna head over to Mobile View and just check that everything is running as it should. Here we can see that the gaps between each of these blocks is a little bit too small. And we can also see some of these text blocks are too deep. So we're just gonna reduce the height and a little bit of housekeeping to tidy up these content blocks. Squarespace gives us a lot of flexibility over the look and feel of our content blocks. And it allows us to switch to mobile view at any time and change those sizes without it affecting the desktop view. Hope you found this helpful and we'll catch you next time. Cheers. If you want to say in the future direction of the content that I'll be creating at Pixel Haze Academy and to get involved in our community, all you need to do is leave me your email address. We're looking to create our first community in the coming weeks and I'm going to be throwing everything I've got at it. That includes our Moonshot Transformation Program, our entire library of online courses, the opportunity to engage with me in regular group sessions. There's more information in the description and I'd love to hear your thoughts on how we can develop this. Thanks again and I'll catch you soon. Cheers.